Hello, people. I'm Jabby Kawe, joined by Miriam the Masip. Miriam the Masipish. <laughs> Masipish. Uh, kind of like Masipi. My Masip. Like, there's got to be something he's on there. Thinking. <laughs> I got a bunch of marry me, marry if you're not marry my prize. Marry, marry my tie, marry my tie. So we're gonna look at 10 plus incredible facts about APJ Abdul Kalam. I have no idea what we're in for with this video, but it was recommended to me by the okay. by all of the all of the youths. And uh, here we go, let's check this out. This video is sponsored by Sunday, India's first sleep tech startup. Sunday sells mattresses straight to the consumer, cutting out the middleman and saving you up to 30%. Click the link in the description to receive a special deal only for the Koei family. That's you guys. Hmm. Oh, interesting. That's I an interesting. Like that. I'm really into dreams, actually. In this episode, we're taking a look at one of the greatest heroes to all, if not most, Indians. More popularly known simply as APJ Abdul Kalam, a man who came from humble beginnings and rose up as the leader of a nation. What's happening, everybody? My name is Leroy Kenton. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. And throughout this video, I'll be referring to APJ Abdul Kalam most times as Dr. APJ. And he's literally our most requested topic right now. Like we have pages of requests from people asking us to do a video on Dr. APJ. People like Jaheed Gul, Shivam Kumar, Josh Gamer MC, Tech Hub MEA, Jeshwant Reddy, Manny Duvedi, Kanishk Rawat, Young Homie, Anurag Dube, and Pau Piali. And that is just a few of you guys. Now, before we officially begin with this video, I want to ask you guys, what or who inspires you? Beginning with the early life of Dr. APJ, APJ Abdul Kalam was born on the 15th of October in 1931 in British India. He was born in a region that is now called Tamil Nadu. In his early years, Dr. APJ spent a lot of his time studying mathematics, which led to a fulfilling career as a scientist. He came up from a poor background and he actually had to start working at a very early age just to supplement their family's income. For work, he distributed newspapers after school and his father, Janulabdin, had no schooling at all. However, he did own a ferry and he took Hindu pilgrims back and forth between Danuskodi and his hometown of Rameswaram, Tamil Nadu. Dr. APJ attended the Madras Institute of Technology and graduated in the year 1960. After that, he joined the Aeronautical Development Establishment of the Defense Research and Development Organization, or in short, the DRDO. And then following that, in the year 1969, he was transferred to work for the ISRO, and that is the Indian Space Research Organization. Mm. Now, from there, that is when his whole career skyrocketed. He was a project director of India's first satellite launch vehicle, the S. LV-3, which had successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in near-Earth orbit on July 1980. He was heavily involved in India's military missile developments, and for that, Dr. APJ was nicknamed the Missile Man. And yet, he really earned this name because of his work in the development of ballistic missiles and launch vehicle technology. I mean, this guy was like a gifted, talented genius. So why is this development so important in terms of ballistic missiles? Well, it gave India another tool that allowed them to have a great tactical advantage rather than using the standard cruise missiles. The main advantage is that ballistic missiles can fly above the atmosphere and travel very quickly. Just to give you an idea, a target at 10,000 kilometers away would be hit in 30 minutes. Because of the efforts of Dr. APJ, India's Pokhran 2 nuclear tests in 1998 were advanced much more quickly as well. Because you see, the previous nuclear test that was done by India was back in the year 1974. So that's more than 20 years prior. As I mentioned before, he is just a natural gifted genius. So it's no surprise that he was a recipient of honorary doctorates from 40 universities. That's 4-0. Okay, and check this. His impact as a scientist was so great that in the country of Switzerland, May 26 is considered Science Day to commemorate Dr. 
Dr. APJ's visit to Switzerland. Wow, he even has a national day in another country based off of him. Wow. Now, there's so many other facets to his career as a scientist, but I want to quickly touch on his career in politics. Dr. APJ served as the 11th president of India. He won the 2002 presidential election, and he was in office from the 25th of July, 2002, to the 25th of July, 2007. And because of his humble attitude and demeanor, he also earned another nickname, the People's President. But surprisingly to me, and I'm sure to many others as well, although he achieved so much, Dr. APJ was never married. At the presidential residence, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, his hairstylist Ahmed, asked him why he never got married, and his response was this. I was married. I was married to the missile. And that was just solid confirmation that Dr. APJ was committed to serving his nation. Everyone on this planet has a different calling, and for Dr. APJ, it was advancing his country. Now, APJ Abdul Kalam didn't just love his work. He was a great lover of poetry, most specifically Tamil poetry. He could play the Veena as well as he could recite the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita as well as he knew the Holy Scriptures very well. The religion he did identify with though was Islam. Now we can't fit all the information about his life in just one video, but I do recommend his autobiography that was written. It's called Wings of Fire. It was first published in English but has since then been translated into more than 13 languages. He was a prolific writer and wrote about 15 books. The subject matters on those books range from nuclear physics to his spiritual experiences. You can clearly see why this man was and still is an inspiration to many people. And I haven't even touched on the amount of awards that he received. In the year 1997, he received the Bharat Ratna, which is the highest civilian award in the country of India, as well as here are some of the other awards that he's won. But sadly, all great things do come come to an end in this life. While delivering a lecture at the Indian Institute of Management, Dr. APJ collapsed and died from apparent cardiac arrest on the 27th of July, 2015. He was 83 years old at the time. But his legacy will continue to live on in the hearts and minds of many people, as well as through his writings and videos made after him. The life of Dr. APJ even inspired one Hindi film. The movie was called I Am Kalam. In it, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam is portrayed as an extremely positive influence to a poor boy named Chotu, who later on renames himself Kalam in honor of the man who inspired him. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This episode of FTD Facts was brought to you by Grammarly.com. Join the hundreds of other FTD Facts users that have started using Grammarly.com. This software allows you to improve your English skills a lot. It checks spelling, grammar, and punctuation errors. So whether you use it for school or work or whatever, there's always going to be a benefit for you. Even if you're a fluent English speaker like myself that think you know everything about the English language. So I have the link to that down below. You can start using it for free. There are many ways that we can live our lives and one of the main lessons that we can learn from the life of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam is that no matter how simple, poor, or insignificant you may be, with a burning desire and a strong hope and faith in what you believe in, fueled by genuine love, you can achieve great things. A symbol of hope and inspiration, not just to the people of India, but also to the rest of the world. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam's legacy will continue to live on for generations to come. Wow. Wow. That's funny, I just finished reading the uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich? Okay, yeah. in Napoleon Hill. And he says that, like, the burning desire. That's all yeah. I, I did that book on audiobook because it was... It's a dense book. Reading it was just a little bit taxing on my patience, so I did the audio version of it. And I remember hearing some interesting stories within that book, or like lessons to take with you. It is a very powerful, uh, helpful book in terms of... I mean, it needs to be updated, but yeah, I like. I really like the philosophy is in it. Now, the thing that caught my ear, my eye, the most is the... The fact that he never had a wife. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hint at all if he ever had, had a relationship of any kind, yeah. but uh, other than him being married to his work. And that is a thing. It's like, it's so hard to choose between the two. Like when you love something so much, when you love doing something so much, like how do you divide that time up and give it to 
another individual who is not immediately intrinsically tied to the work to that you're trying your, to do. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I mean, it just takes time. Oftentimes, you'll you'll find people who are married within their own industry, lawyers ending up with lawyers, artists ending up with artists, because it's just like that's how you meet, and it, it just makes sense because it's in line, it's parallel with what you're doing, as opposed to someone who doesn't have any comprehension of what your industry is like, what your endeavors are like, who can't really understand it. And you have, you have some people who are like opposites attract, and you know you, you like hearing about that person's other world to unplug from your own. I think in Star Isaac Newton, he never had a wife. He had never been with a woman at all because he was just so married to his work. He didn't need it. It's just crazy. Yeah, that's that's how it is. I was uh, a year in med school, and that's what the doctors told us. Like, no, you gotta marry this. If you're gonna do it, you're gonna marry this. I left to come here to the U.S. and blah, blah, blah. You're story. like, well, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get me some action. <laughs> Peace out. Y'all fix this medical shit by yourself. No, thank you. But that's how it is. <laughs> you know, you're gonna marry that. And, and yeah, like, relationships takes time. It's just us. They do take time. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relationships take time and effort, and so he, he, he dedicated his life to giving back and, and you know research, learning, developing, and and helping out. I wonder what his reign was like when he was PM. It is different to be a scientist and to be a politician, and like I mean, if he's that smart, you know. I really, really wonder what it would have been like if, for instance, Bernie Sanders had won and become president. Like, yeah. would we see a difference? Would it feel exactly how it feels now, or would we see? A fundamental difference from what it is. I mean, obviously, the very controversial situations we got going on now with the camps and whatnot wouldn't be a thing. That would have been handled totally differently mm -hmm. by Bernie Sanders. But I wonder. It's like you have. To, it's left up to your imagination what that would have looked like. But we did have Obama for eight years, and so we know what that looks like, right? And I just want to know, like, how his presidency or his time as prime minister compares to Narendra Modi, for instance. Was it a development of affluence for India during the time that, you know, Abdul Kalam was seeing over the country? Because you get someone who's so smart running things. Science has like a lot of blockage, like, uh, you know, industries and everything trying to block like real science. So seeing a scientist ruling, like I can see so much like pushing towards that. Like I would definitely, I'm curious to see what it what it would look like, what it looked like yeah. with him, funds going that way. Yeah, I mean, try to imagine someone like Albert Einstein or Michio Kaku or, I mean, maybe not so much this guy, but Neil deGrasse Tyson. Try to imagine them being president for even a year, like what would that look like? What, what different things would get passed? What what laws would be pushed forward? How would that affect the country? Because I don't think we've ever had a scientist president in, the, in this country. Mm. So that's a very fascinating thing. And I'm curious how that, what just is like almost as, as just data points. Like that's so fascinating to me. I'd love to know about like that. If it's mostly positive, other countries can use that as a as an argument as to their platform. If a scientist were to run for president, it's like, look what happened in India during this time with yeah. Abdul Kalam. Like, Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but also, yeah, you gotta take into account, like, their their personalities and how they deal with stress or, you know, sure. different things. He looked like a chill dude. There was not one angry photo or video of him in there at all. He just looked like a very simple, like, chill guy and was just, you know, kept his head down and did his work and did his best, and you know, to give died. as much as possible. He died working. Yeah. That's crazy, huh? That's insane. That's probably the coolest way to go. Yeah. Of course, working and doing whatever you love, but damn. I Me guess. personally, I want to go out making love. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah that'd that's be a like good one. one last hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah. And you're out cold for realsies. <laughs> So, anyways, you guys, that was just a weird way to end this. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us and, and watching our reaction to this. Uh, do let us know your feelings and, and please inform me, you know, what it was like while he was running India. I would love to know that. I'm very, very yeah. curious about that. Check out Miriam Masip on the social media. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we drop another video. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, and interviews. I am Jabby Kuwait. This is Miriam Masip. Peace out.